Hi, everybody. Hi. Welcome to episode 36. 36. Loving it. Well, um, how are you, Matt? I'm good. How are you? I'm really, really good. We're looking forward to doing this session, aren't we? Yeah. We've got all sorts, as per usual, going on in our world. Um, let's just recap this morning. I managed to uh, get up at 4 a.m. I actually set the alarm for 6 a.m., um, but you inter- got up at four. But I got up at four. So um, I, I, did you see the board? I'd put six till seven, yeah, seven till yes. eight. So so I kind of managed to get ahead of the game. So That's I, amazing. Don't get me wrong. I did go to bed early. So, you know, I sometimes work through the night and yeah. I, you know, I can't always be getting up at four because of my members page that I, I man- manage myself. I do like to be very time efficient, Matt. And sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't work. Um, It's progress, not perfection. So um, this thing, I've got a whoop. We'll talk about that later. But this thing has actually really helped. It was like, if you get to bed at 8 or 8.45, which I was shattered because training has really made me really enjoy my sleep and rest. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. and, and, And they say that if you, which I can't do to perfection i can't do a regular bed routine because of of my work and because of some training things that i have going on but i do try and i have i leave the phones downstairs when i do tech it's an absolute winner so it's not the first time that woken up at four but that time was a freak time that wasn't actually planned and i had gone to bed at like midnight so that was not a good idea and i ended up going back to bed but today was like I'm not going to sleep anymore, you know, and I got like... I can't believe it. And you just get up and you're out in the garden doing a workout. It was honestly, it was really nice. Yeah. It was one of those ones. So I did, I did the run first and then I thought it's absolutely stunning outside. I went outside and literally steam is coming off my body. The moon is full and I can hear an owl. And I'm just thinking, this is so beautiful. We're doing a lot in the house. We're doing a lot out of the house, doing a lot in the garden. We've just had, it's really been muddy, hasn't it? Yeah. And we've had to put some wood chipping down. So as we stop the mud and that's just been an absolute game changer. So my back garden looks like a child's playpen, (laughs) doesn't it? Which is what it reminds me of is a playpen. But we're so happy because... It really is work in progress what we're doing here and it's big goals, big huge goals and the dogs, we we did have to sort the dogs out and their house is nearly ready for opening, isn't it? Yeah, It's. I went and looked at it yesterday and I was like, it's, it's so there. cool. It's really amazing. I, um, I think we'll have quite nice times down there, you know? Yeah. Sat there with the dogs, reading to them, etc. No phone zone. No phone zone. The pair of us this week, we kind of had a little check-in yesterday, didn't we? We were saying that we'd let our food prep slip a little bit, but we're doing, we're still doing well. Yeah. But by the skin of the teeth, in the sense <laughs> that we're 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 making the food that we originally made, but it's shit. Like <laughs> we're not putting the yogurt in. It's, yeah. It's very half-assed. It's not. we so we said, okay, this is an area that we really need to do because something happened to me. Didn't I told you in my training, I I usually do um, two hours of training whenever I do training. And my training isn't at its maximum right now. I'm doing about eight hours at the moment and it's not at its maximum for Ironman for next year. And the what other... is the maximum? I think it's going to be like, I think for half Ironman, I think it's like 15 hours, wow. maybe, maybe yeah. more, but to 10 to 15 hours, which will be mainly on the bike, really, I think. Yeah. Bike running i've got the running machine but we just ordered a walk bike haven't we from yes. ebay and that's going to be the next thing we're kind of going to get set up here so what happened was i went training and i ate really well in the day i felt quite healthy but i've got this thing i think the gels i'm going to start having to take the gels because i by the time i'd done my training session and then i was in the pool there's nothing the problem is is that i reached a point where past no return so i'm i'm ravenous like it's like i need yeah, sugar in my body really like work out when you're like that it was it's so annoying like i even had a protein shake before and it just wasn't cutting it it was just something was up and it just threw me off really because i'm usually really strong in my training and i think i went on youtube and was just looking into nutrition and stuff like that somebody was saying it was called bonked i'd heard of this term before because you bonk on a bike right so you don't you you go out on a bike yeah it sounds funny doesn't it it's like bonking but they call it um i remember um 
years ago, someone uh, they told me about the term bonking, and it what it means. I think let's Google it. Actually, what it actually means: cycling term bonked, <laughs> throwing up. Cycling term bonk. Right, here we go. Bonking is what cyclists called hypoglycemia, which is the medical term for abnormally low levels of blood glucose. So that's what happened to me. You bonk when you have exhausted your glycogen stores, having, haven't ingested enough carbs to produce more blood glucose and are still riding the bike. I feel that's what I did um, the other day yeah. without a shadow of a doubt and so i am i'm trying to be a bit more intuitive with my food i am still trying to want to lose fat and become a little bit more defined but also i, I feel like i want to feel good in my training sessions and you need and to feel energized i'm at a really good size now i think i'm at a healthy size i'm at 70 kgs and i yeah. seem to be stuck here that is down to me. I, I struggle to do a calorie deficit. I think I've shared that. And something needs tuning up. And I'm not sure what it is. But I think it's going to change at some stage. But I will work it out. Yeah. Now that I'm training more, the nutrition side is probably the biggest part for me. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be just eating shitloads of junk food. No. But I also want to get that nutrition side right and i think i'm going to start incorporating gels and drinks and things like that and not be so anal about sugar yeah no totally you need it you yeah. need it to perform and now you're doing all this extra stuff that you weren't yeah it's like something has to compensate for that and i it? i think what will happen and because food is quite a topic here for us isn't it because yeah. you're, you've got goals and i've got goals yeah taking life anyway a day at a time a diet at a time or whatever a day at a time how did i feel today do you know what i mean like this morning i feel fabulous i got yeah. up at four and i did my protein pancake so what i did is i did, took the egg whites i got a egg put some oats in there put some protein powder in there cooked that like a pancake flipped it put some yogurt on some fruit from the freezer love it and then obviously i needed a little bit you know me i've got a sweet tooth put a bit of maple syrup on there yeah. a bit of cinnamon and it was fabulous um and, and it's fine. Yeah, it was really good. And I feel like I'm good until lunch. But what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to start using gels a bit more in my training sessions. Yeah. And I think that will help because I will have to use gels and stuff when it comes to the Iron Man. So what does the gels have in it? So I should go and get one of them, shouldn't I? I'm back. I've got the gels. Okay, so these are the ones that I, I saw some athlete using these. These are called uh mortine since and they've got in them water glucose fructose calcium carbonate glucose acid sodium alginate so you it's tend like to, salt so, and so you use these and what is it electrolytes are mainly salt right so that is the other thing as well is i should be using electrolytes because when i train i train fucking hard yeah i train fucking hard <laughs> i love training hard and i enjoy I, i've got that animal instinct now back to train myself and i i feel that i'll be able to take things like this this is not unnecessary yeah i feel i'm i'm there like that's thinking i don't need to pack in jail it's unnecessary but now because of the way things have been going i think it's a good idea yeah now on the point oh of stuff like this now we're going to get onto a few bigs we've got a couple of books here but we just tend to let this flow really and as we've started talking about this now i found out a bit this on instagram i'm not really on tiktok a lot like tiktok shop i think it's full of con artists people just want to make a quick buck but instagram for me i feel are more credible people now not everyone's credible no this is where we're here to sniff them out so i feel i have nothing to lose but to be honest because I just, I'm not sponsored by anyone. I think it's tricky to sponsor a sex worker or a previous sex worker or someone with a history like mine. So I've got nothing to lose. So I just take what I want and say what I want. Yeah. This, yes, I like it. What does this taste like? Slightly like chocolate, but oh. like a bit chocolatey, but sugary, but also like frog spawn. Oh. Chocolate's frog spawn. Oh a light, mild chocolate frog but it's not ch actually chocolate but it reminds me of chocolate chocolate frog spawn so we've got some other things that i'm happy with so there's this company i've already mentioned them in my instagram um posts ancient brave now the reason why i like them and i'll tell you why i like their branding it's lovely isn't it 
Ancient and Brave. I liked them because they're influencers, but there's just one that's a little bit annoying. Okay, this one, Dame Kelly Holmes. Um, so Dame Kelly Holmes is a retired British middle distance athlete. She's a TV oh. presenter and a television personality. Holmes specialised in the 800 metres and 1500 metres events and won gold medals for both distances at the 2004 Summer Olympics in Athens. Love it. So she's absolutely ace. Yeah. So I saw it come up on my adverts and I was like, oh, Kelly Holmes. And the guy, do you remember I went to adapt their thing richie norton he was also he's i think he's like a influencer for them right. and i like him i was like okay this is so gonna be basically a good brand. Even influence that you like in like uh, Influ- they've something. influenced me they have yeah, yeah they've influenced me to buy stuff i sent you something the other day didn't i it was yeah. like a coffee with like oh yeah so, so do you know what you know me for this mushroom stuff. I'm not buying it anymore. So is that was that mushroom coffee? It was like I mushroom coffee. I, I I don't know why people try and piss over coffee. Stop it. Do you so know what you, I mean? you're just like, do you know what? Have coffee, a coffee is coffee. <laughs> yeah. And I'm having my coffee, Have not a my fucking fake coffee. one. Absolutely. So, but I had a mushroom coffee. So I've m- my sister remember she introduced me to some of these mushroom coffees, uh, New Tropics. I've got mushroom coffee, and I quite like them. Would I buy them on a regular basis? Not really. I think they're nice to not. To, if if you're like right, I've had my coffee. I'm, I felt something different. I'm going to have this like a herbal tea or something like that. Okay. I'll have one of those mushroom ones. I'm not crazy about it. I tried one of those things called mud water as well. It's another Instagram thing. Oh yeah, thing. I saw that. Shite. Does it taste like mud water? Absolute shite. Do you know what it tastes like? Cinnamon shite. <laughs> Cinnamon and chocolate. Do you know what? It, it's like stop slagging off coffee. Just have your coffee. Just move away from coffee. You can't compete with coffee. <laughs> and mushrooms, we we t- like there's got not going to be much in it anyway. You know, all this people trying to push the mushroom thing. I just think it's like CBD. People try and push. It's very uh, hard because so there's so much information online. You don't know what to believe. It's, it's, it's a bit overwhelming. It, there's so everybody's trying to sell you stuff. Anyway, right, ancient and brave. <laughs> They're collagen. So I take that in my coffee is a powder form mm-hmm. um and this mct oil apparently that's like do you remember bullet coffee so i think it's a bit like lets the caffeine slowly release. slowly release yeah i like this it's a win for me i will get it again they also sell stuff like this um i like this this has helped me sleep i swear this is their like lemon drink at night oh, take one home cool. with you and try okay. it tonight it's got magnesium and stuff in it but i love it before bed and i've been oh, sleeping better you. so must be working. How's the little tablets going? So I now in the morning take these. For me, this is a win. So this is because I'm plus 40. Right. So not necessary for you yet, Matt. But for me, this is a win. This is, and apparently the Kardashians have been mentioning this one. This is NMN, Age right. Mate is called. And that will probably come up on your Instagram thing. But I, this is a win for me because I don't like drinking green powdery drinks. It just, it's as soon as somebody says blue. green, I'm like, Ugh, I want purple, purple. <laughs> <laughs> so so this is great all the stuff in it it's got like is it vitamins and minerals? magnesium spermidine <laughs> i thought you said spermicide then. <laughs> but vitamin c vitamin d3 vitamin k vitamin b1 vitamin b6 b vitamin tw- uh b12 sodium yeah this this is working for me because i'm sleeping great and i look amazing fabulous. you do and then listen i probably don't need this but you're looking well it's called a day pill i like the pot and it's a bunch of women it's saying how color how they sleep better i'm like oh, give me that sleep and i can't deny it i'm sleeping, sleeping better so i don't know if it's the cocktail that i'm taking <laughs> but this is working for me anyway i'll give you other bits that i have um i'm gonna discontinue these absolute collagens um there's another brand this is absolute collagen there's another brand called coco site which apparently got more collagen in it so i'm gonna stop taking these they taste disgusting but they do work and what's that do for you (sighs) makes you look younger matt oh proof is in the result <laughs> and my iron drink my, do you know what i haven't taken haven't taken it this is what you do you just open it it's apple flavor i get these from amazon now but that's I'll... good i should probably get some of them i feel like i have low mm. iron matt i literally have a bucket full in the kitchen help yourself <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> there's okay. anything that you can get around here it's fucking help <laughs> it's looking anything younger. i've seen on instagram it's here <laughs> yeah. the next week that's like the thing is when you mm-hmm. see something on instagram it's like it stalks you forever i know you they look can at fucking it hear what i'm talking about and then you go on facebook and then you just go on like the internet and it's following you like buy me buy me and that's what happened with that protein powder and then I fucking bought oh it, my didn't God, I? And didn't I fucking you? hate it. Matt, go and get the fucking protein powder. Where is it? We've got to slag off Matt's new protein powder. <laughs> oh, get mine as well. Okay. Wicked. Yes. Right, we're back. Okay, Matt. First things first, let's show them your protein. Okay. So I'm just going to do a little backstory. So <laughs> yeah. I whey protein so because i'm gaining weight i've always bought like the mass gainer ones so they're like intense aren't yeah. they um and two I've... sex have you put on weight yes yeah I i've have. lost weight this like fraction oh. is like not a lot <laughs> i have what i, I am gaining good look. yeah you look great oh yeah baby <laughs> <laughs> right sorry i digress so i've been I've always tried the mass gainers and they just upset my stomach so bad. And then it was almost like it is a lot of calories and protein, but then I drink it and I couldn't eat for the rest of the day because it fucks me up. Can't almost counterintuitive. What's good. the point? Yeah. And it makes you feel like shit. So I then went to Huel and I, to be honest, I, maybe I should go back to Huel. Cause I no, have... we don't like Steve Bartlett. Okay. <laughs> does, <laughs> is, does he have shares in it now He's or something? <laughs> He's just trying to sell us everything. <laughs> I actually, I'm going to be honest. I, Huel didn't upset me. I think I just got bored of it. It was just like I had it for so long. Why not? What about this? Right, so we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and so then I saw Huel and then I went to my, I went to Protein Works. Yeah. And I got their vegan one and that was all right. And then it's, I would have it and it started to taste really fucking weird. And I thought I was just getting a bad vibe at this. So I stopped that. Yeah. Then I went to Protein Works Way, Mass Gainer. Yeah. And I had one of them and it fucked me up. Yeah. So I was like, right, that's that out. So then I found this one. It's called Form. He did contact me and said, have you heard of this one? I said, yeah, I did. I think it's quite a good one. Yeah. Well, the reviews say it is. Yeah. It's supposed to be like really good protein, like it's not the cheapest. And I think I might have got the vanilla or flavourless ones basically put in stuff. Yeah. And, and so... It... I bought chocolate peanut and I was like, I'm going to have one. I made one yesterday. First of all, I blended it in the electric blender yeah. thing and it wouldn't even like blend properly. Like there was massive clumps at the bottom. I tried blending it multiple times and then I drank it and I was just like, Blech. oh my God, this is so disgusting. Like It it's was just, disgusting. It's so gross. It tastes like, it does not taste like chocolate peanut. It tastes like, do you know what? It tastes like matcha. Well, I actually said to you, didn't I? Because I went, I went, Matt, that's not chocolate. That's like hazelnut. The thing is, you're not going to buy that again because no, it I'll tastes disgusting. No, I'll probably use it still, but. I think. And then this protein is way, but for some reason, it just, I love it. Like, I maybe I should you, just go for Matt, it. Matt, just use it. I hardly yeah. use the chocolate. Use that one. Okay. I love the vanilla. I've got vanilla, banana and chocolate. Yeah. Matt, the chocolate is delicious, isn't it? Yeah. It is gentle. It's such a light it's protein. so. But it's got protein good. in it. It's really good. I love it. It's got real clean ingredients as well. So check it out. Look, we're not we're not sponsored by anyone. So we're we'll we're here, just we here to be honest yeah. and get results. results. So we're loving this, aren't we? So yeah. we so we are gonna get back to our food prep because we've let it slack a little, haven't we? Yes. We've got complacent again because we let work take over. But we're gonna try and do, we're gonna do another um one we're gonna do um slow cooker aren't we yeah so as we've got you know bulk cooking stuff rather than loads of different dishes um but yeah that's where we are with with all of that you know still sort of searching for the perfect but for me this is the one i'm not going to digress from this i love it yeah it is really nice it's so good isn't it It you you kind of need a little bit more it's not too sweet you kind of need a little bit more like it does per serving is 25 grams i'm not going to do 25 i'm going to do 50 grams yeah so what else have we been doing? So I have been reading and I am, um, I accidentally matched with the book today. I did not mean to, but it's just the way I work. But here we are. And um, I've been reading this. I'm a bit of a, maybe that's part of my ADHD. I, I'm a bit of a slow learner. It takes me a little while to get things. I've been listening to the audio and I've been reading this and I've been taking notes and I'm really fascinated by the way Eco. Eckhart 
Toll teaches things and to understand what ego is I think it's like a, it's it's so fascinating to me yeah. um I am very interested in a part in here that is um talks about the pain body um pain body is so for example I feel having read this that I have quite a big pain body so stuff that has happened to me in the past can end up triggering me. And the times that that's most tested is when you're in intimate relationships or things like that. But it can be in any form of relationship. And so that's something that I'm going over with now, even with my therapist. I had therapy yesterday, which was great. And I ended up, but like, it wasn't like last week's, which was doing inner child work. We are currently, um, this to do with pain body as well. Um, it's just I admit this I mean I'm doing anger management with her she said that there's a bit angry teenager in me etc which can come out when I'm kind of like stressed or whatever but it's it's about not getting to that point setting up boundaries so as I don't get to those angry that are like too, gone too far do you know what yeah. I mean I don't know that so she's kind of helping me with that and I don't I I think everybody's got a little bit of anger in them and it shouldn't I be definitely anything do like I've it's deep inside me but as a as a kid growing up I really did have anger problems like yeah. it was so bad yeah. and like I had to suppress that when I I remember when I went into like secondary school I was like I'm gonna suppress this because I can't act like that it's embarrassing yeah but I think it kind of count was a bit counterproductive you seem so like chill <laughs> yeah now. but i can get fucking angry but i i do feel like i am at a place now where it does take a lot to, to yeah. get me back there same which is good because i don't want to be there it's, if every time i've done it i'm like it's horrible it just it doesn't do anything it's good. such an emotional hangover as well it's like yeah. i hate it that should not be happening we should not be in those situations there must be something so terribly wrong that that should be happening in ourselves and in the situation. It does take two to tango. So we go back and I, I do a lot of work, but it's almost, I think it will help me. If I, she's teaching me how to understand like what's happening in that moment. So I've got a long way to go, not a long way to go, but there's more sort of deeper work to do, which is very interesting. That's where you could be, uh, where anger can happen is getting touchy and stressed. If you're not taking care of yourself so I'm glad I'm getting therapy while all of this is going on because and she's teaching me all sorts of stuff communication what's not working right for me and things like that I think it's yesterday as I was sat there with her you know I came back and I, I told you what happened I was like gosh this woman's like really helping me um, just see things like not let things go on too long do you know what I mean yeah. therapy is really helping me in so many ways right now it's it's going really really well um, and I talk about various amounts of things as well so um, this is great I will go into this a little bit I have marked up some stuff and you've got a book as well I've also yeah. brought this one along but we'll get on to that one it's about intuitive eating um, but I've really gone into this one a little bit more so the pain body which is super, super interesting. This is what Eckhart Tolle has named it. But at the, at the back, he kind of lists it. Is it's, it's like, this book says, are you ready to change your life? Oh, actually, and Chris Evans has given it a referent. My number one guru will always be Eckhart Tolle. That's so nice. I thought Eckhart Tolle was a bit too weird for me. But yeah. he's got me under a spell. <laughs> I'm loving it. Do you know what? I read, I read this book before. I don't think I ever finished it, but I yeah. feel like I need to do it again. Because... Well, I am I love this bit about the pain body. You'll find it. I, I feel like this is really interesting, but it really gets juicy around Maybe here. Maybe I should have kept reading and yeah. I would have stuck with it. The, the, basically, when it, I, I, I've got it on audio and book because I like to listen to it at night. And, and yeah. then I'd be like, gosh, this is so, so, so interesting. So pain body is, I feel, translated is a little bit like trauma trauma that we've had from past experiences that something will trigger and that will come up in the way we treat people and he almost the pain body is like talks about this like psychic change like you know where you go um you have an outburst and then someone's like i don't know who this person is yeah Do you know what i mean yes. that's what he's explaining the pain body is so i'll go over some of the bits that i've um highlighted highlight fucking loads the pain body i'll tell you how big it is that's the section and then it continues to talk about breaking free from the pain body through right. there but really most of it is explaining he's explaining a lot so i've got a bit here what is a negative emotion an emotion is a to that is toxic to the body and interferes 
with its balance and harmonious functioning. Fear, anxiety, anger, bearing, a grudge, sadness, hatred, or intense dislike, jealousy, and envy all disrupt the energy flow through the body. Apart from the heart, the immune system, digestive production of hormones, and so on. Even mainstream medicines, although it knows very little about how the ego operates, yet is beginning to recognize the connection between negative emotion states and physical disease. An emotion that does harm to the body also affects the people you come into contact with and indirectly through a process of chain reactions, countless others you, you, you never meet. There is a generic term for all the negative emotions and it's called unhappiness. So he goes on and on. There's another bit here that I've highlighted. I'm going to read this. I'm going to, re I'm going to read loads of bits to you to okay. see if I can sell, sell this book to you again. Um, here are some examples. What the ego calls love is possessive. Oh, right. So positive emotion generated by the ego already contains within themselves their opposites into which they can quickly turn. Here are some examples. What the ego calls love is possessiveness and addictive clinging that can turn into hate within seconds. Anticipation about an up and coming event, which is the ego's over valuation of future easily turns into its opposite let down and disappointment when the event is over or doesn't fulfill the ego's expectations praise and recognition make you feel alive and happy one day being criticized or ignored making you feel rejected and unhappy the next the pleasure of a wild party turns into bleakness and a hangover the next morning there is not good without bad, no high without lows. Ego-generated emotions are derived from the mind's identification with external factors, which are, of course, all unable and, and liable to change at any moment. The deeper emotions are not really emotions at all, but states of being. Emotions exist without the realm of opposites. States of being can be obscure, but they have no opposite. They emanate from within you as the love joy peace that are aspects of your true nature right here's a story as well carrying the past the inability of rather unwillingness of the human mind to let go of the past is beautifully illustrated in the story of zen monks tanzan and akido who were walking along a country road that had become extremely muddy after heavy rains. Near a village, they came upon a young woman who was trying to cross the road, but the mud was so deep, it would have ruined the silk kimono she was wearing. Tanzan at once picked her up and carried her to the other side. The monks walked on in silence. Five hours later, as they were approaching the lodging temple, Akido couldn't restrain himself any longer. Why did you carry that girl across the road? He asked. We monks are not supposed to do like anything like that. Tanzin replied, I put the girl down hours ago. Are you still carrying her? Now imagine what life would be like for someone who lived like Akido all the time, unable or unwilling to let go internally of situations, accumulating more and more stuff inside. And you get a sense of what life is like for the majority of people on our planet. What a heavy burden of past they carry around with them in their minds. Just like Eckhart, I feel it really tries to teach people how to be in the present yeah and there's a few little tips that he's mentioned in this book and about feeling inside like when i'm lying in bed i f what can i feel inside my hands and yeah. can i feel inside my feet and it's like how to take you into the present moment even when i'm driving driving's one of the worst where you come out your present state can I feel the heated wheel <laughs> steering wheel? Oh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Private joke, but, you know, basically I discovered that I had a heated steering wheel. We had a chat about a heated steering wheel the other day and you were like, no. And then you I don't think I got one. And you were like, Matt, my fucking steering wheel was hot. <laughs> <laughs> I thought and it was the sun, like... but it was like cold. But anyway, that's another way where I can be present. Sometimes it's nice to listen to music, but like really making sure that I am present. Another thing when driving is you can have a closed heart or an open heart. So if your heart's closed, you could maybe be like, I'm late. I'm yeah. going to drive like, and I'm going to be, oh, that fucking person in front needs to speed up. Or mm. like you get all like angsty and you you, mm. you can get in this state mm. of mm. like, you're not present. You're, you're, you're too worried mm. about being late or, and you're starting to get in your own head a bit and then you can have an open heart and, and you can sort of sort of sit back and go, do you know what? There's nothing I can do about no. it. I'm just going to enjoy the ride. Yeah. Be be happy now. Be yeah. happy now. And that is such a thing that's even in the law of attraction about being happy now, about worrying is 
it's easy to say somebody don't worry but i really teach myself don't worry yeah. it will always the faith that i have it will always work itself out yeah. it's always going to be all right but we I, I mean i was raised by a worrier and so i have to like change that story yeah so this is another one because of the human tendency to perpe to perpetuate old emotion almost everyone carries in his or her energy field an accumulation of old emotional pain which he calls the pain body so we all carry shit from our past yeah like we can't help it like resentments and things like that yeah every newborn comes who comes into the world already carries an emotional pain body in some, it is heavier, more dense than in others. Some babies are quite happy most of the time. Others seem to carry an enormous amount of unhappiness with them. It is true that some babies cry a great deal because they are not given enough love and attention, but others cry for no apparent reason, almost as if they were trying to make everyone around them unhappy as they are, and often they succeed. They have come into the world with a heavy share of human pain. Other babies may cry frequently because they can sense the emanation of their mother and father's negative emotions and it causes them pain and also cause their pain body to grow already by absorbing energy from the parents' pain bodies. Whatever the case may be, as the baby's physical body grows, so does the pain body. An infant with only a light pain body is not necessarily going to be a spiritually more advanced man or woman than somebody with a dense one. In fact, the opposite is often the case. People with heavy pain bodies usually have a better chance of awakening spiritually than those with a relatively light one. We have to have a spiritual awakening in the rooms, it, which is a spiritual awakening is just generally a psychic change. Like you, you, your personality changes. It's not like, like, oh my God, I'm levitating, you know, <laughs> like this crazy... It's it's really you go you're trying not to be an arsehole anymore. Do you know what I mean? You go from being a relatively lesser yeah. arsehole than the arsehole that you were previously. Oh, the pain body is addicted to unhappiness. I've put wow here. This must be good. It may be shocking when you realise for the first time that there is something within you that periodically seeks emotional negatives, negativity, seeks unhappiness. You need even more awareness to see it yourself than to recognise it in another, another person. Once the unhappiness has taken you over, not only do you not want to end an end to it, but you want to make others just as miserable as you are in order to feed on their negative emotions and reactions. In most people, the pain body has a dormant and an active stage. When it is dormant, you easily forget that you carry a heavy, dark cloud of a dormant volcano inside you. This is where I resonate. Yes, a dormant volcano inside of you. Depending on the energy field of your particular pain body, how long it remains dormant varies from person to person. A few weeks is the most common but it can be a few days or months. In rare cases, the pain body can lie in hibernation for years before it gets triggered by some event. Rah! <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd like, that's what I'd like to get if I get some therapy again is kind of just to go through my past and just see if there is anything that might yeah, might be there still. You'd be so triggered. surprised. And there probably is. Yeah, I think it's so, so weird. The, the sad thing is I... I buried a lot of stuff to just cope with life you know it's I didn't mean to but I did and now that I've sort of got a bit more of awareness whether you want to call it awakening or or not um I'm seeing things in a different light yeah. and I feel like I'm an adult now when I was in my late 20s and mid 30s I, I just feel that I was in a state of like not conscious kind of thing and there are things that I didn't think about you know, there are things that j just have come up now. I'm just like, I'm glad things are the way they are now that certain people aren't in my life because there are things that shouldn't have been, it's just not right, you mm -hmm. know? And so this is quite interesting because I do know I have trauma and I'm reactive. I'm getting help for it. Yeah. I do not, she is helping me prepare myself for a relationship. What, where I'm at now, I'm not ready for a relationship because I, I genuinely think I have a lot more work to do on myself. I do. I cannot take my past into a new relationship. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We've seen that with my previous relationship that was really sad yeah. um, and very, very triggering. And I think, you know, for obvious reasons. And 
I don't want to repeat that. I know how I want my life to be. I want a peaceful life. Yeah. You know, if a relationship, you should get in a relationship and it, it make your life better. Yeah. Not in, take an away. Extension. Yeah. yeah. It's not always ta- got to be an extension. It's so got to. Matt, you know, and you I- the level that I, I do things at, right, I don't want someone to slow me down. I yeah. want them to speed me up. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I love my life right now. And that is, you know, and I'm, I'm sure you do. So we've talked about this, haven't we? Like, I don't think I really thought about the people that I spent my time with and company with because it was just about attraction mm-hmm. and love and connection is so much deeper than just being attracted to somebody. Yeah. It's like, you've got to have shit in common. <laughs> you've got to have the same values. I was never fucking taught that. I always think though, <laughs> like with that what we do it's like with the energy side of things kind of what you put out or put into yourself you're gonna attract because when you're like low or when you're not looking after yourself and you've got these traumas that come up and you're trying to find someone you're gonna kind of get a like for like basis the low vibration yeah vibration if you're on a high vibration you're gonna you're you not are gonna... going to be attracting higher vibration people yeah to. that's i believe that so. and, and you're gonna know your worth yeah the the, the self work the work that i'm having to do and and i'm enjoying it to be honest i'm enjoying being alone and getting to know me and loving myself yeah it's it's really nice. All these books are helping me. This is so fabulous because even how I operate in my day to day life, how I manage you, how I treat people, etc., how I show up in life with my friends, I really this ego thing is fascinating. And this book is helping me live yeah. my life, live a more happier life. It's so interesting. I I I, I will probably be reading this for a little while because it's quite deep. Yeah, it really is deep. I've, p- I've pinned back something. He's got something, actually, I've got something a bit further on. It's about the awakening. I think would be actually really, really interesting. I've got so many. Oh, God, I'm going to read this bit about unconscious people, which I quite like. And then I've got another bit. Unconscious people. I was an unconscious person for a very long time. Yeah. I feel, I can feel it like that. When you say that, is it kind of like not present? Yeah. Kind of. Unconscious. Just living like you day to day. Yeah. And you're not really like. Get up fucking. Right. Checking in with yourself. No. not None at all. None yeah. at all. So disconnected. So disconnected. Conscious people and many remain unconscious. Trapped in their egos throughout their lives will quickly tell you who they are, their name, their occupation and their personal history. The shape or state of their bodies and whatever else they identify with. Others may appear to be more evolved because they think of themselves as an immortal soul or divine spirit. But do they really know themselves or have they added some spiritual sounding concepts to the content of their mind? Knowing yourself goes far deeper than the adoption of a set of ideas or beliefs. Spiritual ideas and beliefs may at best be helpful pointers, but in themselves, they rarely have the power to dislodge the more firmly established core concepts of who you think you are which are part of the conditioning of the human mind. Knowing yourself deeply has nothing to do with whatever ideas are floating around in your mind. Knowing yourself is to be rooted in being instead of lost in your mind. It's very interesting. Mm. I'm going to do two more bits. The joy of being in this bit on awakening. Okay. So the joy of being. Unhappiness or negativity is a disease on our planet. What pollution is on our outer level is negativity on the inner. It is everywhere, not just in places where people don't have enough, but even more so where they have more than enough. Is that surprising? No, the affluent world is even more deeply identified with form, most lost in it in content, more trapped in ego. People believe themselves to be dependent on what happens for their happiness. That is to say, dependent on form. They don't realize that what happens is the most unstable thing in the universe. It changes constantly. They look upon the present moment as they're marred by something that has happened that shouldn't have or as deficient because of something that has not happened but should have. And so they miss the deeper perfection that is inherent in life itself. A perfection that is always already that here that lies beyond what is happening or not happening beyond form. Accept the present moment and find the perfection that is deeper than any form 
and untouched by time. The joy of being, which is the only true happiness, cannot come to you through any form, possession, achievement, person or event, through anything that happens. The joy cannot come to you ever. It emanates from the formless dimension within you, from consciousness itself, and thus is one with who you are. He's so deep, isn't he? He's so deep. He is. I get it. He's so deep. So at the end, it's like your inner purpose. So we're always talking about purpose. And I really, really do believe that for me, how would I describe my purpose? My purpose is these dogs. My purpose is just growing and doing better. My purpose is building a wellness place. I've got a vision. That's my purpose. My purpose is to, you know, help others where I can, where I'm, I've got the ability to. I have a really big purpose, which keeps me alive every day. Yeah. If... You don't have a purpose. I honestly think you're susceptible to depression and losing your fucking way. Yeah. You have to have a purpose. Yeah. My purpose, when I was unconscious years ago, I had kids. Now, I was still unconscious when I had kids in the sense of like, fuck, I just, but they were my purpose. I needed to feed those children and clothe those children. Was I emotionally available to those children? Probably not. I'm the first to hold my hand, hands up and say, I don't think I was a great parent. I really, really don't. I don't think I gave them the emotional nurturing that they needed. I didn't have those tools. I wasn't able. And, and you know, that will always be a big regret of mine. But what I did know how to do was provide. Mm -hmm. And that was my purpose. That's what kept me going in life and and just generally surviving. And so I think that's what's kept, kept me going. It, well, there were some fucking unhappy times. It wasn't great being a single mum you know but I do feel that having them I do actually think that if I hadn't had children I honest to god don't think I'd be here today wow I know because I feel that the purpose of having children kept me alive yeah I reckon I would have got into the party zone and just because I would be leaving parties going I've got I've got to go I've, I've you know I've got, got to go to, go to the, kids. Yeah, I've, the kids yeah but everybody would carry on partying yeah you know, and so it was like I had this responsibility. That itself is awful. Like that, that is, you know, I hold my hands up. I was not a great person in that sense. I wasn't, you know, I didn't have those set of skills. I was pretty fucking messed up in time. And this is the work that I'm having to do now. I've got to do the work on myself. And that is the way it goes, I think. You know, everybody has to take the responsibility. There's nothing I can now do. My children are older now. They now have to take it upon themselves to do the work like I'm doing because of the backlash. Not the backlash, but what happened with my parents, the skills that I set that I get. I've got to do that work on myself now. Both my children, because of that kind of domino effect of the parenting skill set what what gets passed down i was a young parent so at 16 that can't have been great for the firstborn cameron so he now has to do the work on himself no one can just sit there and blame everyone you just got to go this is where i'm at like the the work that i did this is where i'm at i need to take this and i need to take care of myself now you know we're all responsible now for our own work that we do on ourselves when we hit adults mm -hmm. you know but you know this book is fucking great your inner purpose as soon as you rise above mere survival so i was in mere survival 20s and 30s the question of meaning and purpose becomes a paramount importance in your life so many people feel caught up in the routines of daily living that seem to deprive their life of significance so this is i really get a lot of resonation with this because I didn't give a fuck what my purpose was. I just need to pay the bills. That's where yeah. I was. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's a privilege to be where I am now. It's a privilege to go, what can I do? Can yeah. I build this? I'm in a privileged position. Do you know what I mean? But I really understand this because, you know, some people haven't got fucking time. They're waking up in the morning. They're getting the kids ready. You know, it's that's where people, some people's existence really is now. So they don't know who they are. Yeah. You know, great chapter this. Page 257. Yeah. Many people feel caught up in the routines of daily living that seem to deprive their life of significance. Some believe life is passing them by or has passed them by already. Honestly, in my therapy session, that's that's what came up. I felt that there was this little bit of resentment that I hadn't been raised right and I had fucked up my childhood. Do you know what I mean? Like having a kid at 16. But I knew as a woman, I cannot think like that. I have to do the work that I need to do in order to not have that resentment and live this beautiful present life that I have right now in peace and, and forgiveness, you know, yeah. like 
I can't be blaming anyone. Like they had their skill set. Do you know what I mean? It's like it's strange, isn't it? You yeah. know, I've and got. It kind of goes back to like the pain body. Yeah, like, the pain body. Totally, man. Like if you hold on to that forever, you're never going to get through it. You're right. Do you know what? The other night, I found myself, and this is where this awareness bit and where this book's helped me. I find myself playing a story in my head, going, Ugh. and then I go, no, 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 we're not doing this. This is the ego. We're not doing this. We have a great life today. Where am I present? I've got my dogs. Everything's beautiful. So now I have this awareness of what's going on in this head. Mm -hmm. I can pull myself and stop and go, I'm not doing this. I'm not yeah. thinking like this. But that will probably take time. Yeah, I just definitely. have to. But you can control your thoughts. Yeah. Definitely. Some believe life is passing them by or has passed them by already. Others feel severely restricted by the demands of their job and support in a family or by their financial or living situation. Some are consumed by acu acute stress. Others by acute boredom. Some are lost in frantic doing. Others are lost in stagnation. Many people long for the freedom and expansion that prosperity promises. Others already enjoy the relative freedom that comes with prosperity and discovers that even that is not enough to endow their lives with meaning. There is no substitute for finding true purpose. Then I'll go on here. Your inner purpose is to awaken. So he says that there's an inner purpose and an outer purpose. Inner purpose is simple, he says. It's to awaken. It's as simple as that. Your outer purpose is to change over time. It varies great, greatly from person to person. Finding and living in alignment with the inner purpose is the foundation for filling your outer purpose. It is the basis of for true success without the alignment you can still achieve certain things through effort struggle determination and sheer hard work or cunning but there is no joy in such endeavor and is invariably ends in some form of suffering lovely awakening is a shift in consciousness in which thinking and awareness separate for most people it is not an event but an oppressed process they un undergo and i'm going to continue with aw the awakening thing because they talk about the spiritual awakening in, in recovery and and it it's it's a it's a psychic change it's that you've got to change what you're doing wasn't working yeah. you've got to change and it takes time and you're, like, yeah you're like reprogramming your subconscious mind totally. you can't do it overnight it's like us with like the food prep it's like yeah we are having to literally program our subconscious food mind prep, spiritual to, awakening to <laughs> remind ourselves to cook and like I know. make shit yeah i know and um a spiritual awakening it's it's a funny one it's like it's very interesting everybody's got their own version of it really and um, I just work on my spirituality and keeping myself in that calm state, you know, and being able to communicate and making sure, you know, like I'm taking the dogs for the walk and, you know, I'm doing the Grow Friday and we're doing our reading and we're communicating and the wheel, everything's, yeah. you know, everything's been... I think that having little anchors really help with it because it's so easy to get slipping and out of like the the mindset and everything but then you get these fucking messages and signs and it's oh my like, god matt it's like yeah <laughs> signs insane and you're like this is why i need to fucking keep doing it because so we've had mega signs i don't know if you can mention yours can you i've been i have a few that i can mention i've yeah. been seeing like 11 11 and i don't know if 1 11 means anything but i keep seeing 11 11 and 1 11 like one 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 well i feel that what happens is you know the sign is your sign yeah so it doesn't matter to anyone else it's just it doesn't, so odd it's just you know it and i'm like oh my god I, this is something this is and Matt. then you had yeah 69 is haunting me like 69 <laughs> it's a joke my spirit guides have obviously got a joke going but 69 everywhere but yesterday i bought several items i thought oh, i'll just stop off at the garage and get some treats and the guy went, oh, my gosh. He went, it's 777. My pet, he goes, you should buy a lottery ticket. I didn't. I was like, I'm not being pressurized into buying a lottery ticket. Anyway, it was £7.77. And, <laughs> and I was just like, do you know? <laughs> Imagine it was like a deal. Any free for 777. <laughs> and then he like does this little con at the yeah. checkout. Oh, yeah. To buy a lottery <laughs> no. ticket. That would be quite a good one, actually, wouldn't it? Yeah. And so... I was, I just got in the car because I had asked for strict signs that everything's going to be okay. And it is, it always is okay. Like, you know, you were with me yesterday. I joke about things, you know, 
Re- renovating a house is no joke. There's all sorts of money coming, money going. But I know how to handle this shit. Yeah. It is part of leveling up. It's being uncomfortable yeah. and putting your big girl pants on and going, right, I've got to change this. I've got to do this. This is happening. I've got an amazing team around me. Mm. You know, even with the renovations <clears throat> with you. Yesterday was hilarious. Yeah. Like we cut, it was money orientated, but we were taking the piss like it was just so extreme with things that had to be paid and we were just finding a joke joke about it like, what else should we buy <laughs> a today? skip have you got a gold-plated one but you know it's it's like with renovations you could get a bit stressed but do you know what it's just not worth my energy and yeah. today i felt absolutely fantastic and getting all that stuff done and dealt with yesterday really was great and we've got some stuff to do today i feel so on my shit today if i've got my hair and makeup done by fucking nine ten o'clock you know it's gonna be a good day yeah do you know what i mean yeah. if, if matt usually can i tell. came in and you were like i'm ready <laughs> i'm ready <laughs> if matt comes in matt can tell so if i've had a bad night's sleep matt can tell because he'll come in and i'm like like where's all gummage do you know what i mean and i'll be like i haven't slept very well i'm gonna have a bit of a later start today because <laughs> my day is it doesn't really kind of end does it it's sort of like i've i take that day as like i've got plenty of hours in the day yeah. i can work in the night because you know it's a, it's a business place and we got so much done yesterday i'm so pleased with us and we kept our sense of humor yeah which i think is very important for us not a sign of trauma <laughs> <laughs> no i'm joking um so i've got this other book i am it's a very thin book i've only just started it with all this stuff i need to know what i'm doing i, I you know intuitive eating i don't want to overeat i don't want to under and i think this next 10 months is going to be really about learning how to nourish my body properly yeah same here food prep is an ongoing task for matt and i we're gonna be fucking amazing one day yes but it's it's work in progress isn't yeah, it yeah exactly like everything we've got some we're other not giving up we're, we're not giving keep, up what did you say earlier keep throwing stones oh no. yeah no the more mud that you mud, throw at it it will eventually stick. stick um so that's where we're at is is the nutrition side of thing nutrition sleep i've got to tell you about i'm obsessed okay i never used to like watches or anything no, you like have that two. Um, i've got two i've got a whoop <laughs> and i've got a garmin so the garmin i'm getting better at logging my swimming and outdoor etc etc this is really good and this is like <laughs> and you've now, got your backup one now i've got whoop i don't need to press anything this knows what i'm doing this is like proper big brother stuff here so let me show you the app matt i've got like a free trial i think it might have expired and they're probably already taking money from my account but i don't care because i like it but you can get a free trial and i can up with this is just the cheap band but you can get like colors and stuff yeah so uh you know it's got all this day so what time have i got to go to bed tonight oh i've got to go to bed at half seven. Oh my fucking god that got up is at so four. early because because i got up at four but you know i'm not always going to listen to them it's a bit extreme i don't think they know who i am i need to go do you, do you know, know who I'm i am mental. look it knew that i was exercising this morning oh my god and it will know when i'm swimming it can just tell when i'm doing whatever it is yeah I like the app. It looks it's very nice. It's really app. cool, Matt. It's so cool. I, I, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. It's staying. Whoop, it's staying. <laughs> so we have got a Whoop bike on its way. We got it from yeah. eBay, didn't yeah. we? Someone's um, going to pick it up. We're setting up our fitness zones here. We have bought a little something off Instagram. I'll surprise you with that next week. Um. Anyway, have we got anything more? Book. Me. I yeah, read a Matt's book. got a book. I'm so done with my book. You gave this book to me. I and gave it's him the book. Matt's, Matt's going to teach me now. It's quite a short little book. Um, yeah. But it's about quantum leaps. Yeah. And I think it's fucking great. Honestly, I, I could probably you. read it like 10 times. I told you. Um, so basically, it says a high velocity formula for multiplying your personal effectiveness in quantum leaps. This is about the power of U squared. So it's like U squared. The book kind of starts with like a little, um, so it's like a fly. Imagine a fly is trying to get out of a house. Oh, yeah, that story. And it's like the window's right there that it can escape. But it's like constantly trying to get out the glass. But it's more than just like working smart and not hard. It's got yeah. some more levels to it. It's almost a bit, it's almost getting in the in the element of Amanda Francis. Yeah. But like not quite that far. But mm-hmm. it's like 
the the boundaries of it with this book it's like rewiring almost what you know and your habits your patterns Mm. and behaviors Mm. completely different it's kind of like you're accepting this quantum leap and it's and instead of like marginal gains which we're all programmed to is making marginal gains and having these goals it's kind of having faith in yourself and thinking beyond common sense and common practices and like facts and going for a more open-minded and like maybe delusional but like not delusional like like you can't delusional it's still it's delusional but you shouldn't think it's delusional you should genuinely be like passionate and like i am actually capable because mm-hmm. there is like things that we can't see here feel in this world i do believe that there is energy and yeah. i do believe with we're like very much into that vibration and and things can work in your favor if you genuinely believe it mm. and this book kind of pushes that so it's like i've just put some notes here so it's like faith first of all faith is so important you need to have faith in yourself you need yeah. to have faith in what you want and what you're doing thinking beyond common sense so believing that there's more than than you know out there there is helping you a power greater than yourself yeah yeah like your higher power yeah and then there's like they bit. say it without saying it don't they they, get, yeah. they describe it and they're like they could just say god your higher power there is a power if you tap into it but they're kind of like saying it without scaring people yeah because if you don't like no if you're not into that then this is this is a good start because that is a lot to like takes a while to kind of but get there it could be the thing is is everybody wants to see to believe yeah yeah but but to not see sort of changing that. yeah like it, it's like i don't know we just believe you in can it. see to believe and make progress and make gains but you're going to make bigger gains like yeah. quantum leaps if yeah. you if you start to open just your have mind. the faith yeah yeah so i've put you don't have to make small marginal gains quantum leaps is all about huge jumps so yeah employing new behaviors patterns and habits that are far from what you're used to going against the grain of what you know and for success you need to take risks so Mm. what works now and in not taking risks in like in like the normal way you'd think it's more just like you are risking what you know and what you behave like and what what works for you now because we all have we all have these tools that we have built up from living that Mm. we know what works and what doesn't yeah and it's kind of going against that and going do you know what what could actually work for me and and the things that work now might not work in the future or they might not work if you're trying to do a massive jump yeah you always got to change yeah we know that yeah not what what something that worked one day ain't gonna necessarily work the next yeah. you know business go bankrupt for yeah you know look at the um, print industry <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, well, i've put work smart not hard don't be conventional so it's almost like going away from conventional mindset and um act as if success is certain so mm. no doubting and I think using like visualization and meditation journaling is really good for this. So once I read this book, I wrote loads of notes down. Yeah. And then I put it on my home Ooh. screen. So I will get up the actual full thing maybe and read it out. I love visualization. And I sat there in bed afterwards and I shut my eyes because there is a bit, I think there's a bit in there where it takes you through a visualization process. Yeah. And then I just like decided to do my own and I just. I went through with like a house and like my life just completely different and kind of waking up in this house that Mm. I own and just sort of going downstairs in the morning, having my coffee and doing all the like normal things I would do, but like in a completely different space and Mm. kind of feeling how it feels to be in this place and in the countryside and like going through my day day to day and yeah. then going out to work so it's about tapping back. into those feelings isn't it yeah that's the key so i put i want to move out and live in a nice countryside home i want a nice car i deserve to have a nice car to commute to work it doesn't matter how much it costs i can have it if i want it i just need to be open to accept it i want ultimate success i'm gifted in many ways and i'm going to show the world my gifts through social media and online platforms my vision to be successful online as a content creator who is multi-skilled and passionate young person who will be looked up at by other young people and setting a standard to bring others up 
I will commit to always growing and pushing myself out my comfort zone, questioning my subconscious and conscious thought processes and learned habits, reprogramming and trying new methods. I see failure and rejection as redirection and growth. That's another thing the That's book, great. The book says. That's great. These are great words. I now live in faith, not fear. I know there is energies and things that occur in this world that we cannot hear, see or feel that will assist me to getting where I need to go. Blimey, I am passionate well about my future <laughs> and where I want to be. It's extremely exciting and it comes from the heart wholeheartedly. That's so good. So that that's on so, my lock screen. So good. Well done. Thanks. You're really good with words. Thank you. I think that's amazing. So but, it's a good book, isn't it? Yeah, it's only a little one as well. It didn't take that long to read. I probably read it, read it for like It is worth it. I do minutes. tend to have to go back, like with books, I always have to go back again. Um, one that came, which I'm going to look up, um, which I feel I need to get my hands on again. I, I need to have a look, see if I've still got it. I think I gave this book away to some people the chimp paradox right i always call it like the monkey mind i don't know why right we'll do this uh, i think this is really going to help professor steve peters creator of the groundbreaking mind model the mind program that helped me win my olympic golds by chris hoy it's about the chatter in the brain which is like ego and all that yeah. sort of stuff the mind management program for confidence success and happiness i think it'd be a really good book for us to pick up actually i think that these two books are really good um pointers because i think having a healthy balance between yeah wanting more in life yeah. and being present is so important but, uh, but it's like how the mind works it's all connected um because the thing is is that you know we need stuff it, yeah like and we want to live it to a certain level in our lives you know and help others at the same time so so being abundant is a good idea because yeah. then you can help other people. Yeah. Um, and it's about just being independent, you yeah. know, financially independent. Your inner chimp can be your best friend or your worst enemy. This is the chimp paradox. We should defo do this one. Yeah. I, I actually don't think I have it. So I might get the paper back. I think I have had it and I've probably given it away. So we are good, aren't we? Yeah. That was a um, really awesome catch up. Um, so, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this podcast and we look forward to you know we've got lots coming up on the um youtube but please always like and subscribe yes <clears throat> comment we've Let got lots more thought. we've got lots more vlogs to come along and yeah we need as much love and support as we can get yeah. like subscribe comments right see you, see next, you week. next week love you bye, bye.